Hi guys, Keith Arkmer Farms. It is a uh, very end of March. Uh, day after this comes out, so tomorrow will be April 1st. And it is just cold and crappy out here. I mean, that's all I can really say. And wet and rainy. I mean, so far the season's really been uh, nothing but a pain. Um, had one day yesterday that I was able to do a bunch of field prep, which I luckily got done. But today, it's too much to do anything. So I'm gonna take you into the building here and I'm gonna work on showing you how to calibrate a fertilizer spreader, which I'm actually gonna show you with the drop seeder. So let me show you. Okay, so it's so much warmer in here. I think it's going to get down to 33 tonight, 30 tomorrow night. We might get up to 50 during the day tomorrow. After that, it's going to break again, but it's just been, it's been miserable out here this season. I mean, I can't even work inside the tunnels because we're getting enough rain that's coming around the sides of it and getting the other two beds wet. But that's besides the point. What I really, really want to talk to you is about working on calibrating drop seeder. I got one right there and on the other side of the building here. I got another one which I just started messing with, which is way better. And I uh, just want to kind of show you the modifications I have to make and how to set them up to get them to do what I need them to do, not what they're actually designed to do. So I'll get them out and kind of show you what I've been doing. Okay, so I got two different kinds of uh, drop seers here. Um, this one came from the big green tool store. Um, this one you can pretty much find anywhere. I got it from the other smaller green tool store. Um, very common model. This one I don't even think they make anymore. They make a bigger one that's now double handled that comes from there. But it's this standard yellow and black model. But this is the one I've been using for years. The biggest problem with it is, is that you have to run it down the bed. I think it was like three or four times to get my 100 pounds per acre. So what I wanted was something not only that held more, which this holds good twice as much but I can go down the bed once and get the exact amount of fertilizer I need so to do that I actually had to modify this but first let me show you this one and we'll kind of talk about what the whole thought process here is so here's a look from underneath now all of these drop spreaders have a bunch of notches all the way across they're almost identically shaped on almost all of them and they kind of account for I could use a larger pelleted. A larger pelleted and up top, you'd go tighter for like a smaller granule, like mainly for yards and using fertilizers and calcium and things like that. On the inside, they just have, yeah, you can see it, an agitator bar. This is hooked to one of the wheels and it actually turns with the wheel moving. So as the wheel moves across the ground, whichever one it is, it turns the bar down there, apparently in a very spooky fashion. So this other model, same exact thing. The only difference is really that it's bigger. It's got a little bit nicer hand control on it up top where this one just had a little throttle hand control, which broke. So we just had to basically kick it open with our foot before we used it and we just run with it. So here are the two basic types of fertilizer out there. We've got our Nature Safe, which is more of a pellet. There's also a lot of crumble and other things in it, but it's primarily a rather large pellet. And this is actually a, I believe this is Johnny Appleseed. I was given some of this to trial, but it's a lot finer of a granule compared to the nature safe right here so you can really see the difference so this stuff would probably go through the drop seeder just fine without modifying it i'd have to do some tests and make sure i get the right amount down where this being a larger pellet does not so i'll take you back over and kind of show you how i modify and also determine how much is dropping on a pass so the first thing we want to do 
is know how much fertilizer we're dropping per a set amount of space. So to start with, we mean know our beginning weight of our fertilizer, 10.260 pounds. Now we take and load our hopper. Next, we run our drop spreader over a predetermined distance. So from uh, expansion joint to expansion joint is nine feet. So I'm gonna open it up. I have this set at an eight, which is halfway, which is actually the calibration setting for this cedar or drop spreader. So now we're gonna run it. We stop, pick it up and move it out of the way. Okay, so you can see how much it dropped. It's not too terrible bunch. It's mainly dropping smaller pieces at that setting. There's some larger stuff in here, but it's really kind of grinding it and drop it through. I did make sure and sweep the floor beforehand, but you can kind of see what the overall pattern is, which I can just tell visually that that setting is not enough. So now we carefully pour what's left in here back into our bucket so we can take a second measurement on it. Being relatively careful we don't drop much. It does like to go all over the place. But we're just trying to get a rough measurement more than anything. Okay, so we'll take this back over to the scale and get a second measurement. Okay, so we're left with 10.14. That leaves us with 0 0.12 pounds and that was over nine foot. Now we get to do some math and see how much that would be over a hundred square foot. So here is where the real fun begins. Okay, so we gotta start with the conversion. We know 0 0.0023 pounds per 100 square foot. It's conversion from pounds per acre to pounds per 100 square foot. So this is a known number. You can look this up on tables. We want to just estimate at 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre. So to do that, we multiply the 100 times this number to get our 100 pounds of nitrogen in a square foot. So that gives us 0 0.23 pounds of nitrogen in 100 square foot. Okay, so from there, we can now determine how much fertilizer we need. Our fertilizer is actually uh, an 855, so it has 8% nitrogen in it. So we take our 0 0.23 and we divide that by 8%. 08 is 8% right here. And that gives us 2.875, and that's pounds of fertilizer. So that is the number we're looking for on a 100 square foot bed, which my beds actually are all 40 foot long. We take that times 30 inches, which is actually 1.5 feet, and that happens to equal out perfectly to 100 square feet. Now, if you have a 50 foot bed that's 30 inches wide, that is 125 square feet which slightly complicates things, but is still a pretty close number to work with. That's kind of some of the reasons I actually determined my bed length at 40 feet. Also, if you buy stuff in 50 and 100 foot lengths, it gives you a little bit extra to put them on top of hoops and things like that, to where you can always work on your 40 foot bed with a standard piece of material. So now we go back to our original amount we dropped, which is our 0 0.12 pounds. And then we got to convert that into a 40 foot bed from the nine foot bed we just dropped over. So we go 40 
over 9, which will convert it. So we did 9, we want 40. So 40 is on top, the 9 is on the bottom. And that gives us 0 0.53 pounds of mix we would drop on a 100 foot bed. That is less than five times the amount we just dropped. So we have to go way up. There's two solutions for that. One, we can open the hopper further, or two, we have to start modifying the hopper. So we're gonna go back over and I'll show you what I've done. So this is really where the fun comes into play. I really, really need to do a spreadsheet for this to make this a little easier to bounce the numbers around because even I've got to think about it sometimes because the conversion does not work directly like you'd be doing conversions for like physics or like a math problem in school or something. And there's really no online calculators to really handle this kind of situation where you're trying to scale up. Uh, the greatest thing to do if you're really confused on this is find out how much fertilizer you have to put down on a hundred square foot, go out there in the field, take this thing, run over a bed see how much drops out on 40 foot of that bed that will give you a hundred square foot number from there you can modify and work up to it i've actually done it both ways so i'm going to turn you around and kind of show you where i started with working on this thing and then where i went to so here's pretty much how it dropped out of there um, Originally, we've just got these small holes. I've got it set on eight, which is halfway. So it was nothing but these little diamonds. I actually went through and removed this piece. But before I did that, I'll show you down, I'll open it up even further. Right there, you can see where the tooth is. I took out the tip of it. Let me try to show you a little better. So I came through and went to every other one of these. And I just cut off this bottom section, basically where it went flat. And I did every other one. So I took every other one all the way down this whole entire thing. Opened the hopper all the way up, ran it, did not drop anywhere near enough fertilizer. So they all looked like this originally, every other one. So then I went through and cut off the whole entire tooth on every other one. These ones are still like this on every one as well. Ran a run just like I did there at eight. Just kind of look at it, see what it ended up like. So mainly I'm just dropping stuff out of here and little granule stuff falls out in the other ones. That's what I just did. Still nowhere near enough. So what I did is I went and I adjusted it all the way out, which I will show you now. So now I've got really big openings here and here, and I've got smaller ones here that are still dropping out stuff. But if I took every single one on the first go, I might be dropping too much. And then I've really, really got to play with what it's set at. So this is midway and this is all the way. That way I have two very distinctive settings I can work with. So the setting I'm talking about is actually on the handle here. So like right now it's on an eight. You just turn it, goes up to, get it, eight and a half. What I did is just crank this thing until I hit the very, very end. So I would get the maximum amount I could open it. So right there, does not move anymore. Now, when I engage it, I get the maximum opening on the hopper. So now we repeat our process again like we did last time. Take a weight, we'll drop, we'll take our weight again. So we got this number, we'll drop, and we'll take another number. So again, we're going to release the handle, make a drop right next to our original one so we can compare. So you can really see that is a huge difference. This was our first drop, which is nothing in crumblies. Here's our second drop, which is a nice, thick carpet it's not really ground up that much and I do know from experience of dropping a lot of fertilizer out of this old guy that this is about what you end up with afterwards maybe a little bit thicker because I think the last time that I really calibrated that one I had four passes on it 
but then somehow we ended up with three. So we'll take our second number, dump what's remaining back in the bucket, and see what we drop. Okay, so back on the scale, 9.345 pounds. That actually means that we actually dropped uh, 0 0.795 pounds that time, which is roughly six and a half times more than we dropped initially. Um, we come back to our first number where we dropped uh, the 0.12 pounds. So if we looked at what we need to drop, which would be the 2.7 or 2.875 pounds, we need to drop about 5.4 times more. Turns out we dropped 6.5 times more, which is just about right on target of what we were aiming for. I'll go through real quick and do the math and show you what we need uh, or what that actually dropped per pound per acre of nitrogen. So I'm not going to bore you with the math this time. I will do the math and I'll point to it here in a second. So we've done the math now. So just from this run, we had uh, our 0.795 dropped. We take the 40 over 9 because we went 9 feet. We want to know how many is 40 feet. Gives us 3.53 pounds for 100 square foot. We take that and we convert it into pounds per acre. The 100 square foot cancel out. And as our conversion factor, we divide it 0 0.0023 pounds. And that gives us 1,536.2 pounds. And that's of mix per acre. Now we want to know how much nitrogen is in that mix. So we take that number and we multiply it by our 0 0.08 our mix is 8%. That's where that comes from, which gives us a grand total of 122 pounds of nitrogen per acre. And they say you'd never use math anywhere outside of school, unless you really want to get technical about how much nitrogen you're putting down on a field. So um, that was just off of that one single run. I've actually ran this quite a few times. Sometimes I get a little bit more, sometimes I get a little less. It kind of matters of where I'm in the bag and basically how fast I'm going to, because it does kind of drop it out as I'm moving along. But also if it's more crumbly, it's going to drop more out. If it's more bigger pieces, it's going to drop less out. But over the average of it, I'm hitting right about the hundred pound per acre mark with one pass of this drop seeder with the configuration I showed you where I cut out the complete thing every other time and cut off just the straight part on every other one that was left. So that gives me a really, really awesome, easy baseline. I can go down my field once, 100 pounds per acre. That is typically what I shoot for for most of my crops. Sometimes I like to kick it up to 200 pounds per acre. For that, I'll make two passes with that. So that's super easy, super simple. Um, I did have it figured out that I think if I put it on the eight, I'd have to go back and look at my numbers. That first trial run I did, then that should give me, let's see, another 20 pounds per acre. So if I just want to say 150, I would go back a second time. So I go down once, full, back halfway. But that's just something you really got to kind of play around with. I really only have two set numbers. I like to go either just 100 pound acre, super simple. Most everything does that. If I really want to juice things up, I'll do 200 pounds acre with like my lettuces or things like that. And then next crop I throw in after there, if it's radishes or other kinds of greens, this won't fertilize at all because I know there's plenty of fertilizer left in the soil. But that is a good instance of what we're looking for with our drop seeder. That one back there, three passes unmodified. This one here, one pass. Modified, beautiful, simple. I can tell anybody out there, hey, go run this over the field block. Done. That's what you're aiming for. Now, I really, really do want to get a spreadsheet up for this. I'm really going to work on that hard. I don't know if it'll be up right away because this is going up tomorrow. So I'll try my best to at least get a beta version up. Um, you go to arkenbergfarms.com, scroll down to the bottom, digital tools and training. I've got a bunch of spreadsheets in there. Uh, there's some freebies in there, other ones that you have to pay a little bit of money. I've got them all super reasonably priced. I've been told I should charge a lot more for them, but I like doing that too. It's fun. Um, after you purchase them, when I update them, you'll get an email to download the newest version. So once you're locked in with it, you're locked in that spreadsheet. If you find a mistake or something, I can go through and fix it. Everybody will get notified of that. You'll get an update. Like 
making this spreadsheet, which should hopefully be, I think I can do it pretty easily. I, I should be able to get this kicked out. You're going to have the beta version. Either way, if something's broken and doesn't work right, and somebody lets me know or I catch a mistake, you'll get emailed, you'll get the new one. So I would go out the field and show you this, but like I showed you earlier, it's a muddy mess. It's starting to rain again. I started hurrying it, hearing it. It might even a little bit of snow tonight, which is just crazy because it's already almost April. We have the first farmer's market this weekend, and I only have overwinter stuff. So it's been one of those years. But anyways, hope you all liked me Saturday. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all. Have a good day. And now comes the real fun. I got to clean all this up tomorrow before my team gets here. It's mad because I just spread fertilizer all over the pack house. So uh, the fun of making videos.